How's it going everybody? Well, here I am walking past the mill and the uh, the hops farm again. It's uh, a little over a year later, you can see my hair's grown a bit and I've probably lost a little bit of weight. Um, according to Forrest Gimp, I needed to lose a bit of weight. I was nearly 300 pounds according to him and the other two yoga tubs, but anyway, we won't worry about what other people think too much, will we? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was well, it was late January, early February last year when I made the last video down here and um, I was pretty excited because I'd got what I was quite convinced was a thylacine family and we had a lot of uh, experts come out of the woodwork to tell us how wrong I was. A few people could see what I could see. Um, either way, it's been an interesting year. Um, I'm in the middle of bringing in the trail cameras now and going through them all. It's a very time consuming process. Thousands and thousands of videos and images to check on, you know, 70 plus SD cards. Not to mention the cameras that we've got on the mainland that Mark Taylor and a few other people have and look after. And Susan Frame's got cameras as well. We've got cameras all over the joint. Anyway, to the point. I've got an image of what I believe to be a female thylacine moving away from the camera. Uh, I'm going to show it to you in a sec. It's basically a, um, hang on, my dog's getting a bit far away here. Jess, come here. Come on. Yeah, you can see she likes to walk a bit far in head. Anyway, this image, um, it's clearly got four legs. It's walking away from the camera. It's a good... 15 to 20 feet from the camera. I'll go back to the spot and measure it. Um, and so you've got a rough idea. There's other photos of wallabies and stuff going through there. For comparison, there's a wombat as well. This is a quadruped. It's got a stiff tail going straight out, slightly curved up, quite thick at the base too. Um, but the thing that's given it away for me is the rear pouch, backward facing. So it's clearly not a wombat because it's got a long tail and Paddy melons and wallabies don't have rear-facing pouches. So um, it's clearly not a cat. It's clearly a hopping, not a hopping, clearly a marsupial quadruped. Um, not that thylacines can't hop because they can. Um, so um, yeah, have a look. Give us your expert opinion and we'll see what the experts have got to say. But um, yeah, without further ado, Here's the photo. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so this is the spot. Um, in spite of what people might think, there is only one photo. I didn't get a series of photos. All I got was one. Um, obviously, that's not the animal. That's a wombat. Um, but the wombat's there as a bit of a size comparison. Unfortunately, I didn't have a photo of a wombat in that area from the rear. But that's a pretty big, pretty solid wombat. That's a fully grown wombat there. Here we have a um, Bennett's wallaby going through the spot. So the animal is in this spot. It's going to appear in this spot shortly. Here's another Bennett's wallaby coming through. Again, quite large, very distinct red hair along the back. They're called a redneck wallaby on the mainland because of the uh, red fur. Here's another one with an even longer tail. And there's an illustrious paddy melon. The uh, little fat rufous wallaby, uh, commonly known as doorstops, if you speak to Norma Baker because of their fat bum. So that is the spot. This is the photo from exactly the same angle. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than the uh, Rufus Wallaby or the Paddy Melon. You can see the straight stocky legs. Um, the tail is sticking out almost straight, but the tip is turned up. Um, now, a lot of the witnesses that see thylacines talk about their peculiar gait, like they were loping along. Um, and um, even if you have a look at the Natural World's Thylacine Museum online at the little video of that gate, which is just a cartoon, uh, computer-generated cartoon, you can see they rock as they go along at certain um, footfall patterns. So if they're doing a, a gallop, 
or a um, canter, that their footfall changes and so does the um, curvature of their back in that locomotion. Um, even some of the footage of Benjamin in the zoo, when he walks around, you can see the change in the locomotion. So here's a comparison shot. There's the um, Bennett's wallaby in the same area. On the left, the uh, suspected female thylacine in the middle and the paddy melon on the right. You can see this animal's rather stocky, rather long, would appear to be walking on four legs and not hopping. Um, its legs are dead straight as it's going, so that would indicate that the hocks are flat on the ground, but the head is down and the back is straight, and you can see a little bit of striping on the back there, I believe. Now, I've put this um, captive thylacine in here to... Uh, uses a comparison for that stockiness. They're not all tall and thin like the historic video of Benjamin. Um, there's a slightly more enlarged version of it uh, with the other rumps there for comparison. Now the interesting thing about this, which pretty well seals the deal for me, um, I'm the eternal optimist, but if you have a good look, you can see that dark circle between the top of the legs. That, in my opinion, is the backward-facing pouch. It's closed and empty. If it's got anything in there, they're rather small, embryonic-sized thylacines. Not very big at all. Very little joeys. A um, couple of different filters I've put across here. Different filters show up a certain amount of striping across the back. If you look at the video of Benjamin when he turns in the zoo and walks away... Uh, his stripes disappear, and I believe that's what's happening here, but there is a little hint of it. Uh, there's another filter I've put over the um, animal, but you can still see those stripes at the base of the tail. Um, and this filter here I like because it really shows up that backward-facing pouch. Now, wombats have a very short little stumpy tail. Uh, this is clearly not a wombat. This is not a Bennett's wallaby, and this is not a paddy melon. It's not an echidna, not a bandicoot, not a water rat, or any other uh, kind of marsupial. This, to me, looks like a stumpy-legged female thylacine from behind. And again, there's another example of short-legged, stumpy-looking thylacines. Um, these two are from the Beau Morris Zoo, and you can see they've got rather stocky rear ends and really... Almost looks deformed to me, that one. When you compare it to Benjamin with his long, skinny legs, this one looks like almost a different species. So, who knows? So, I've still got about 13 more cameras to bring in. I've emailed uh, roughly half of the people who sponsor our cameras. Um, got, you know, 75 cameras out there, basically, all up when, when they're all out and happening. Got a few more new ones there that we can put out next round. So if you want to be involved, you want to get on board, you want to help us try and protect this animal before the government screw it up completely once more, get onto our website, get onto the uh, membership page, fill out a form and we'll get in touch and um, you can help support Tagoa who's trying to help protect what's left of our beautiful, precious wildlife in Australia. Cheers. Mm -hmm.